The experience of circling objects is always an essential one for me as a sculptor. The idea of the back has interested me for a long time as a metaphor of the overlooked. On my few site visits that I made to the Metropolitan Museum, I deliberately looked at the back views of many sculpture works and was amazed at how differently they were treated. Often the back is indeed not particularly filigreed or worked out, but there is also hidden information, as for example in many Egyptian sculptures on whose backs are inscribed characters that one does not grasp at first glance. My name is Nairi Bagramian, German citizen, born in Iran, Isfahan. I live and work in Berlin since 1983. On my side visits to the Metropolitan Museum, I was lucky to have the guidance of Achille Tomasino, the curator of the project, to help me navigate the abandoned collection. As if in a sea of found objects, individual ones were rushed up to the surface to inspire me. In the process, the concept of flotsam and jetsam then arose in me and became an undercurrent. It was not clear to me from the beginning what the idea of the work should be for the niches, but I was certain that it should be something that embraces the public. I looked at the history of the museum and that the current front of the museum was once the site and the main entrance was facing the park does a kind of rotation had set in my observation of the museum. It was only later that the grand staircase was finally built, transforming into today's prestigious front, passed by hundreds of thousands on Fifth Avenue every day. So this idea of the storefront came to mind. The notion of the Met as a collection of art, history, arranged for public viewing and consumption, much like the storefronts climbing the neighboring avenues. And this made me think about the remarkable works by the artist David Hammonds, selling snowballs on the streets of Lower Manhattan alongside street vendors in the 1980s. Or the Tiffany window display created by Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Jones in the 1950s to sell jewelry on Fifth Avenue. So the principle of the shop window, of looking at something more like a glimpse and the idea of flotsam and jetsam came together and gave me the idea for the niches. For me, there is actually no one recipe or one process for how I come to create a work. Sometimes it starts with the drawing. A lot of work is simply created in my imagination. In this case, for the Metz facade, I did start with models comparing to each other. Actually, I filled first the eight niches and reduced them to four. The sculptures are made out of cast aluminum using the sand casting process, then powder coated. There is a positive negative form. Uh, you build it in the sand, take the form out, and you put the aluminum in, and then you break the sand, then bring the pieces together. If the process is not 100% uh, under control, most of the time I'm inviting surprises. For me, the imperfection is always just as important. <laughs> Since I have to go from Berlin to the States, I was looking for a place to assemble the individual pieces of the four works and drive them from there to the city. Also, wenn du jetzt noch ein bisschen vorfahren kannst, so ist glaube ich gut. Also ich drehe. My friend Julie Maretto offered me to use Denison Hill. It's a grand project she co-founded with artists Paul Pfeiffer and architectural historian Lawrence Chua. Vorne höher. Ja, 
Welche willst du es haben? Kommst du da ran? Since we only have one day to set up the works at the Met, it's like the testing ground. Ich komm da ran. I have a small team of two to sometimes four people in the studio. I get easily overwhelmed when there are too many people around me and I get the feeling that I can't be hands-on anymore and that I don't have an overview of the individual processes and details. We did it! We did it! We did it! <laughs> we did it. It feels good. <laughs> it's a nice handshake, I have to say. It's playful. Let's say it's the moment that I'm not afraid of it anymore. <laughs> Let's go. It has been said that I have a recurring theme that follows my way of making art. The absence of the body, the parts of the body, um, the moment when things come together and hold by joints and supporting elements that most in the production of art are hidden. This is also the case with the four new works for the niches, all of which partially protrude from the niches. I wanted to leave some things almost invisible and other times more visible such as the historical structure like the plinth. So I embedded the sculptures around them or next to them. I was not interested in filling all the niches equally. To have less filled a niche, more filled niche, very full niche, getting loser, turning their backs, turning themselves from each side, or other times they're almost falling apart as if they would try to climb up and uh, didn't succeed. All for work seems to be searching for their place and are in danger of slipping, not quite sure if they cannot find their final status. Symbolically, these fragments are held together by a twisted thread. That is what attracts me, like this dangling moment, seemingly not fulfilled. Of course, we do look at them individually, but my experience as I was doing them was from a perspective of a glance or a glimpse. They merge into each other. I would be happy if my work could be read as an argument for how important the location of object is for our culture engagement and to take a fresh look to carve space for the contemporary. And honestly, the new work for the Met, it just feels like an homage to New York's passerbys. The niches should embrace them as a bouquet of shape, color, and form.